This is the Terran 1, the first rocket that's almost entirely 3D printed. It was built by Relativity Space, a startup that is developing a new, potentially revolutionary way to manufacture rockets using the biggest metal 3D printers ever made. When I started the company, I thought there was a 50-50 chance within three months we figured out 3D printing a rocket was just not going to be viable at all. Although Relativity has made impressive strides in the field of 3D printing, it's never launched a rocket into space, a notoriously difficult feat for any company, let alone one that uses an untested manufacturing method. Yet that lack of a track record hasn't diminished customers' interest. As the date of Relativity's first launch approaches, the company says the Terran 1 is one of the most pre-sold rockets in history before launch. Today's global commercial space industry is estimated to be worth over $350 billion. Weightlessness. Oh, Jesus. Although space tourism gets most of the headlines, it's only a tiny slice of the overall market compared to satellite manufacturing and services, which make up almost 50% of the sector. According to a Citigroup report, the satellite market could more than double to $697 billion by 2040. Three, two, one. To cater to this growing demand for satellites, a crop of private aerospace startups have begun developing new technologies to drive down launch prices and capture a share of the market. Relativity Space, which was founded in 2016 by rocket engineer Tim Ellis, is one of the most closely watched companies in the launch sector. The first week of starting the company, and actually the first email I sent from my Relativity Space email account was a cold email to Mark Cuban. We were raising about half a million dollars, asked him for a hundred thousand dollars, and then I think about ten minutes later he, he replied back and said he would give us the entire thing. From those auspicious beginnings, Relativity expanded rapidly to include over a thousand employees and multiple production, test, and launch sites across the country. Relativity is also just the fourth company to ever receive a dedicated launch pad at Cape Canaveral. For the past 60 years, rocket manufacturing has relied on a labor-intensive and time-consuming process involving the assembly of thousands of parts by hand. We have traditionally sent rockets into orbit by designing them uh, very carefully on the ground and going through several iterations of every single component of the, of, the, of the rocket, starting from the engines all the way to the design of the vehicle itself. And rockets work at the limits of their capabilities, uh, and that's why it takes some, so long. Relativity is looking to shake up that traditional model by using advanced 3D printers and artificial intelligence to produce rocket engines and other complex parts in 60 days rather than years. This is our second generation printer. We have a third generation that's about twice as big as this and then a fourth generation that's even bigger than that. So this one's an older version, but it's still one that we're using to produce flight hardware actively. Traditionally, the different metal parts of a rocket have been assembled together by shaping, milling, and welding. But at Relativity, engineers program a robot printer to deposit layers of the company's proprietary metal alloys, one on top of another. So we have our own material science team that develops our own custom aluminum alloys, which is how we can 3D print a rocket that's strong enough and has good enough quality. We use a combination of plasma arc discharge and lasers to melt and then collect data um, on this aluminum wire as it's fed into the print head at the end of a robot arm. To optimize its rocket's designs, Relativity leverages algorithms and machine learning to refine each iteration. Since you're 3D printing it, you can build almost anything that the computer algorithm comes up with. So you do, much like nature, end up with these evolutionary looking parts. It's really because it's a, it's a computer algorithm using physics to determine what the part looks like. Um, so this is a dome for the new rocket we're developing, Terran R. The Terran R is the second rocket Relativity is developing compared to its smaller cousin, the Terran 1, which has about a 2,700 pound payload. The Terran R has a payload capacity of about 44,000 pounds. Relativity says it expects to launch the Terran R in 2024. So we intentionally have this very wavy pattern, um, so that makes it much stiffer. It's really starting to show with 3D printing what you can do that you really cannot do traditionally. With, with normal manufacturing, building something like this, uh, it would be very challenging. You would have to have a massive press 
and then you also couldn't vary the thickness of the dome in all the different locations easily like we've been able to do here. So we really can cut out quite a few steps by printing uh, something like this. So really 3D printing and the approach we're taking is going to get even better the larger things that we build. Rocket manufacturers have typically relied on complex supply chains in which different parts of the rocket are made by different subcontractors. Relativity turns that model on its head by bringing everything in-house with a vertically integrated supply chain intended to make the company a one-stop shop for sending rockets into space. We had to simultaneously build a brand new manufacturing technology, the world's largest metal 3D printers, and build our own rocket. Uh, we have our own rocket engines, we develop our own flight software, all the electronics and computers that control the rocket, the structures, the test site, the launch site. But the advantage of that is there really is not off-the-shelf technology. You can just go buy and plug in. Building everything from scratch lets us also cu cut out kind of middlemen as far as suppliers and other, other companies that frankly would just slow us down. Relativity isn't the first rocket company to incorporate 3D printing into its manufacturing process. But when it comes to 3D printing and rockets, no other company matches the ambition of Relativity. According to the company, the Terran 1 is 85% 3D printed by mass. For its next rocket, the Terran R, Relativity's goal is for it to be 95% 3D printed by mass. Last year, Relativity announced it was also planning to launch the first commercial mission to Mars in 2024. It's a really ambitious but important mission, and despite the private space industry this year being two decades old, there's really only two companies, SpaceX and now Relativity, that, that are working on this mission. Relativity's biggest test to date is expected to take place in February, when the company will attempt to launch the Terran 1 into orbit. Rockets work at the limit of what is possible to do with materials. And uh, when we introduce a new manufacturing technique, which is what is being done by using 3D printed, we introduce a set of uh, unknowns and challenges. So it remains to be uh, seen if this uh, technology actually will be able uh, to substitute what other manufacturing technologies can do. A successful orbital mission would not only prove that a 3D printed rocket can reach orbit, it would also demonstrate that Relativity's new 3D printing technology can be used to build reliable, cost-effective rockets. This is going to be a big rocket. <laughs>